So hi everyone, let's start. Um, so welcome everyone, my name is Anat. I am the VP product at Platain and I'll be your moderator for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I am very excited to be here today. Uh, in this exclusive online workshop, you will get practical knowledge about effective planning tools that you can apply immediately today, right now. Uh, we invite you to participate via chat and submit your questions to the QA box that you have on the top. Your cameras and mics will be turned on during the QA session. Um, and I would like to introduce you to David Twito, industrial scheduling expert here at Platain. David is an industry 4.0 and IoT specialist with over 15 years of experience in the manufacturing and industrial sector. David has been helping manufacturers not only to meet, but to exceed their business goals while optimizing planning and manufacturing and execution. Let's review Good. our exciting agenda for today. So what we have today on the agenda is as follows. First, we are going to cover the challenges in production planning. Um, then we'll talk about key elements in scheduling and KPIs and business goals. Then we are going to cover the methods and the different tools for planning that are available out there for you. Uh, then we'll talk about the uh, plan life cycle and how it is so and why it is so important to have shop flow and top flow collaboration. And then we'll go to my favorite part, which is the automation. And then don't worry, we have plenty of time for your important uh, questions. OK, uh, what are the key takeaways from our course today? So first, um, the key um, takeaway is to learn about planning best practices. Then we'll, uh, the next uh, takeaway is to discover AI powered tools that are available today. Um, we'll talk and we'll learn about streamline the planning process and how it is important and how you can quickly respond to factory flow changes. Uh, we will also uh, get out of the course with, um, with a better understanding about the balance between competing goals in an efficient manner. We'll learn about from real life industry examples. And last but not least, um, OK, so, yeah, so we'll start with the challenges in the production planning. And now David, the stage is drops. Thank you, Anant, uh, for the warm welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, it's my honor. And uh, let's begin. So uh, just to set the background, uh, we will talk about the challenges and we all know and familiar with those challenges in the uh, the manufacturing industry. So we live in a very uh, fast paced uh, world uh, and we constant in a constant need to ramp up and meet the increased demands and scale from our uh, customers. Um, together with uh, uh, trying to address supply chain disruptions, which are always there and the continuous grow uh, for 2025 uh, and onward uh, uh, is expected to 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 grow more and more. There's always in the background the sustainability standards, which gain more uh, more traction and more uh, focus, um, and labor shortages, as always, uh, as you're probably familiar with. So let's cover the first uh, challenge uh, when we talk about scheduling. So uh, the main challenge is the planning complexity, uh, or I like to call it, it's a multi-level or multi-dimensional uh, uh, problem. Uh, and the first uh, and most important, I think, is the resource capacity and availability. This is the first level uh, uh, of complexity. Your deadlines and due dates, uh, uh, which comes from your work orders and your workload, the business constraints and business goals, which are unique to your uh, business, and of course, company rules and uh, knowledge that you own and, and uh, uh, came up with along the years. Of course, supply chain dependency and material availability and balancing between the long term and short term uh, needs as well. And as you see, it's a it's a multidimensional problem. 
and we will see how to how to uh, to attack it. OK, so the next challenge uh, is responding to changes. You live in a very dynamic uh, production environment. Um, you have many unpredicted disruptions. A machine can break down. A rush order can come in and you have a lack of visibility, uh, which affect their responding uh, or your ability to respond. And it takes time to identify those problems. So uh, you, you probably set away or far from your uh, uh, shop floor and it takes time to to those uh, uh, unpredicted uh, disruption to to be visible to you. Insufficient communication channels uh, between uh, departments, between shop floor and top floor, and those all again leads to delays in decision making and responding to those challenges. And of course, uh, the impact of uh, low responsiveness is downtime, reduced productivity, customer dissatisfactions, and we'll see how we can help with those as well. <clears throat> the third uh, challenge um, is your basically your business rules and knowledge are pretty much analog. Okay, you have data silos and there are lacking integration between those. Some information are unique to the to to that department and some is unique to the other department they don't share uh, uh, the data between them and there's no integration between them inconsistent or outdated uh, information if you base your scheduling on white on on papers or on excel it's very difficult to uh, to update uh, those knowledge base and um, and again lack of digital records um, whether it is your process business rules, um, tools or any asset uh, or, any, or any resource location and service condition, material availability uh, and the workforce uh, skills and availability, availability as well. <clears throat> OK, moving on. Thank you, David. Uh, I visited and talked to many, many customers that uh, share just the, sh the same challenges that you were talking about. Uh, so thank you, I think it's very important. So now that we cover the challenges in the production and planning, uh, let's focus on the key elements in scheduling. What are the main or the most important key elements that we need to take into consideration when we are doing the production scheduling? Yeah, absolutely. So as we said, um, it's a multi-level uh, uh, problem and Therefore, we need to address it like so. So you see the, all the, the elements that need to be taken into account when you schedule. So first and most important is your demand set. And we will cover all of these uh, in, in more details in a moment. Um, inventory on hand or any other asset or resource on hand that is required to your production. Resource capacity and availability. And of course, at the ground level, the business rules and goals and constraints. This is your tribal knowledge that we talked about earlier. Any good solution uh, or any good scheduling that you will uh, choose to implement or choose to, to use in your, uh, in your uh, business needs to take all of these into account. And at the end, it will produce you a plan, which first of all is valid, that basically tell you, tells you which orders will be processed, when, with which material or assets, using which machine or operator. As simple as that. I think the most important thing is if you ignore one of these uh, levels or dimensions, um, your plan will not be valid and it will come to a an halt and to a stop and, it won't, and you won't be able to execute it in your shop floor. So let's cover uh, each and one of those elements uh, in more details. First, the, the demand set. So uh, you all know it, it's uh, the collection or work order or workload or customer order. Every factory calls it in a different way, but basically it what needs to be produced and it reflects the demand over a specific period. OK, um, and again, Accuracy is very important at the definition uh, level when the orders transitioning from sales or from any other channels that they uh, introduce to the factory to the shop floor. So it has to be aligned with your production. Uh, so it has to be aligned 
you have to align it uh, between your customer needs and your production capacity. And uh, we're talking about quantities, due dates, and requirements. And of course, uh, the challenges uh, are variability in demand, conflicting priorities, rush orders, or any unexpected uh, event in the shop floor. And I can give you a couple of tips to that can help you with those uh, challenges. First of all, try to do as much demand forecasting as you as you can. Use historical data and market trends. Collaborate closely with sales and marketing. Prioritization uh, is very important. Rank orders by urgency and importance. Uh, you should set the parameter, with it, whether it's based on customer value or any other thing, but keep prioritization very high in your uh, uh, parameters uh, ranking. Align with your business goals. Um, and you can always use some uh, flexibility and scheduling that we all familiar with, like uh, building buffers and variability into the schedule. So you can uh, use those buffers later. Next, resource capacity and availability. So, um, uh, just to understand what is what it means. So the total capacity over a planning horizon. Uh, it could be time, it could be uh, tables, it could be uh, operators, any capacity that is required uh, in your uh, production or it is uh, vital in your uh, production. Um, and as I said, it, it includes resource, workforce, equipment, anything that you need to plan its capacity in the scheduling. And again, it's a multidimensional uh, uh, problem, so you need to address it like so. So all those multidimensional aspects as time, resource constraints, operational shifts, and so on. And again, the challenges are balancing capacity with demand, and again, managing the short-term uh, versus the long-term needs of your business. So let's uh, see how you can optimize resource capacity and availability. Um, you can use capacity planning tool, simulate capacity scenarios, optimize resource allocation. Once you understand, uh, uh, once you have a great understanding or better understanding of your capacity. Um, again, use multidimensional analysis because it's a multidimensional problem. Evaluate capacity across timeframes um, address the uh, constraints and bottlenecks in those timeframes and constantly monitor and update your capacity plan regularly, adjust for any changes uh, in demand. Uh, if you remember the last, uh, the, or, the, or the ground or the basics of, uh, of the entire problem is your uh, business rules and, and constraint and goals. So this is your, basically your organizational knowledge and expertise that you that you uh, develop uh, along the years. It combines unique processes, best practices, and all those bits and bits and bytes that are uh, that usually stays in the shop floor uh, as a tribal knowledge or an unwritten knowledge. Um, and it is ma it it matters because it ensures consistent, practical, and efficient planning, and it reduces uh, reliance on individual experts. So. It's very important that you capture it uh, um, and, and centralize it. And let's see some strategies to capturing your business uh, knowledge. So standard operating uh, processes, uh, SOPs, document those, document the key processes uh, as much as you can, regularly update and review uh, those SOPs. Uh, use knowledge management systems, centralize expertise and best practices. Um, and make them accessible across uh, across your business to all teams, to all departments, uh, and do some regular uh, training programs. Um, encourage knowledge sharings between uh, between your workers. Thank you, David. This is super interesting. Uh, now let's move on and talk about KPIs and business goals. I might I must say that when I'm talking to customers. I see the different organizations have deep, not only the different organization have a different set of KPIs and business goals, even these KPIs and business goals are changed, are, are changed quite uh, on a regular basis. So yes. what is your take? Like what are the main KPIs and business goals that you run into? Yeah. That are so, you know, related to the scheduling first. 
Yeah, so that's a good question. And if you ask us what are the best uh, KPIs or, or the top most, we can also ask what makes a plan op optimal. So is it a high resource utilization, OEE and alike? Uh, is it low operational cost? Uh, is it due date compliance, on time delivery, uh, or is it agility or the ability to quick absolutely to quickly respond to changes? So there are many, and there isn't a one a good uh, answer to that question. It depends on your business. It depends on your business goals, your strategies, and it can change, as you said. Uh, if you change strategy toward the end of the year, or if you change strategy uh, when a, a, a big project comes in, you need to adjust and change your uh, your uh, KPIs. And I think the most important thing is how to um, to how those KPIs work together with your uh, with your company uh, goals, with your business goals. And even more important is balancing uh, between the two and balancing competing goals. Um, and we see it a lot and we need to understand the trade off So, for example, efficiency versus flexibility, quality versus cost. If you increase one, you'll probably uh, get uh, punished on the on the other one. Um, and to help you take uh, uh, the, st the strategic de decision, again, prioritize based on current business needs and evaluate impact on the long term uh, objective. Um, and uh, we we understand it is uh, it it could be complicated. So let's conclude. Um, any optimal uh, plan uh, is a combination of several KPIs. Again, ranked by their their priority. You need to uh, you need to choose which KPIs you need you want to focus. Um, it must support the overall business uh, strategy. Do we want to be always on time or do we want to be more green or more uh, or utilize our resource uh, uh, better? I think it always should boost profitability and growth and at least support it. And again, you need to continuously uh, measure and improve those KPIs and maybe change them uh, along the way. This is very interesting, David, and I see how important it is uh, not only to select the most relevant KPIs and goals of the company for a given time, but also to do the right ranking. So at any given time, you will select the most optimized plan that will fit so uh, that will be fully aligned with your needs and interests and so on. So very interesting. Thank you for that. Now exactly. let's move on to talk about the planning and scheduling methods because I am familiar with a couple of methods and customers many times are asking which method I should uh, choose, which one is more practical or more optimized than than other. So I would like to hear what you think about this. Sure. So again, there's a lot of uh, scheduling methods uh, out there. Uh, we will cover today the top four uh, that are most commonly used uh, across the industries and we will talk about the importance uh, of choosing the right method for you and uh, so we'll cover some backward forward and around scheduling or bottleneck based scheduling and again as you said it must align with uh, uh, with your business goals um, and it needs to optimize resource utilization and efficiency. Otherwise, you probably need a different uh, scheduling method. So let's uh, get uh, technical and let's cover those uh, four uh, quickly. So uh, one of the most uh, common used is backward scheduling. Let's define it, see its advantages and disadvantages, and this will help you decide uh, better in the future which uh, which uh, method you need to choose. So. Backward scheduling, you basically start from the from the end date, your due date or your delivery date, and start scheduling backward. As simple as that. Uh, determine when tasks must to must be started to meet the deadline since you started from the end. The advantages uh, it ensures on time delivery, it focuses on the customer and their due dates, and 
The disadvantages, of course, it requires accurate deadline forecasting, um, and it's less flexible in handling changes because it's very strict. You will end at the due date, and you have no room for wiggle or, or, or room for entering rush orders or uh, new orders or even uh, stoppages in your uh, production. Can it can immediately affect uh, such a plan. Next one, I think it's the most common used uh, forward scheduling. Again, you, you start uh, uh, scheduling from the current date or the current or the beginning of the horizon you want to schedule from. You assign tasks based on resource availability and their standard duration. Um, and the advantages, it maximizes you, your resource utilization. It provides you a clear production timeline. Uh, but the disadvantages, it may result in earlier than needed completion um, and potentially uh, idle times between, uh, between work orders if it's not well managed. Okay, scheduling around. So this is a flexible method for adjusting around key event or key resources or problems or constraints. It's often used um, for managing high priority or last minute tasks or rush orders or unplanned uh, orders. Um, the advantages, it adapts to unexpected changes, as I said. Um, it prioritizes critical tasks and work orders or resources. Uh, the disadvantages, it requires real-time monitoring and adjustment. It can be disruptive uh, and it's very complex to balance if you have multiple priority or you have many rush orders or unplanned orders, you basically end up with probably choosing uh, the, the previous two, like forward or, or backward scheduling. Uh, the last one is bottleneck based scheduling. It's it's a subset of 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 scheduling around, uh, but it focuses on optimizing the bottleneck. Okay, instead of a rush order or a work order or a task, you try to optimize the bottleneck, uh, the constraint uh, uh, in the process, whether it is a department, a station, a resource, and you uh, you you basically try to ensure that this bottleneck is the most most efficient step and then you schedule everything around it this the advantages of course it improves overall system throughput because you eliminated the the problematic uh, uh, resource uh, which causes uh, the bottleneck it reduces delay caused by the bottleneck uh, but the disadvantage is uh, false identification of bottlenecks can lead to uh, very unoptimized uh, solutions or, or schedules and it requires constantly monitoring and optimizing and if you happen to have two bottlenecks you will probably won't be able to do it efficiently or you will fall back to the uh, previous ones so these are the top four uh, methods that we uh, constantly seeing in production um, and i think um, the, the important thing is trying to combine uh, those methods, use a mix of approaches uh, that fits different scenarios. Again, you know your business uh, the best, so you know what will fit uh, best for you. You will know when to use backward scheduling. Uh, if you have a, 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 a great uh, rush order or you need to deliver something on time, or when to choose uh, forward scheduling, if you have more time to try to optimize your resources. Um, and again, automated software uh, like APS or AI-based uh, solutions um, uh, can help you with that. Uh, can help you shift the responsibility from you to the AI uh, by basically testing or, or producing thousands of different uh, schedules and select the best one for you based on your KPIs, based on your priorities, based on your business goals. Let me show you an example uh, that simplifies it and show how it works. So we live in basically in the middle of the AI revolution and it now starts to meet uh, production scheduling. So 
<clears throat> advanced AI scheduling algorithm uh, based on learning and based on uh, historical data. The, those algorithms are constantly learn and optimize uh, the trade-off between uh, your business goals and KPIs. So you don't have to do it. Um, and you schedule both uh, the schedule that you receive are both optimal and practical to execute. And remember, I said that um, um, the AI selects the best schedule for you out of thousands of solutions. And for example, you can see uh, on the right, we have uh, we have an example for uh, here. For let's take Plan A. So you can see Plan Plan A is very good on uh, resource utilization on the make span it's very short and uh, you have a very good on time delivery but the trade off of course it's uh, consuming a lot of energy uh, overall throughput is low and the number of assigned tasks is low uh, as well so uh, you can see that this envelope shifts toward one section uh, uh, of of the KPIs on the other hand uh, plan C is kind of more balanced. You have a good or moderate utilization, uh, a fair number of assigned tasks. Overall throughput is also is also good, and uh, same goes for energy consumption and uh, on time delivery. So this plan, Plan C, is more balanced, and Plan B shifts to all throughput and energy consumption, but you get uh, uh, you get punished in utilization and makes so and this is only a simplified example of three uh, different envelopes uh, and imagine thousands of those and imagine more kpis that you want to take into account and you get an idea it's very complex it's not something that a human being can handle this is where ai uh, comes in and do the job for you David, I understand uh, what you're saying. You're saying that combining all planning methods is key to successful planning. Uh, all or some, if, all or some, depending on your needs, yes. Yeah, but most probably you cannot rely only on a single method. And then I wonder uh, which tools uh, do you have out there to help uh, planners to do the right planning and the scheduling? Yeah, that's a good question. So we've covered the planning methods. And now let's see how we implement those methods in uh, the different tools different that tools. are out there. Yes. Yes. So I think the most common one there there, there wasn't a, a factory or a plan that I entered and didn't see them using Excel or spreadsheets. Same, same goes here. Yeah. yeah. So um, and again, you see you see the advantages right away. It's widely accessible and familiar to all users. Basically, we start using Excel in, in high school uh, and we, 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 we feel right at home. It's highly customizable and flexible. It supports complex calculation and data analysis, which is very important. But the limitation, it is time consuming. It's prone to human error. There is no collaboration features whatsoever. Uh, and it's very difficult to manage large data sets and multi-sites, and I'm not talking about scaling. Scaling is almost impossible. Um, the next one is uh, whiteboard paper-based uh, planning or any out copy uh, uh, planning method uh, out there. Yeah, and again, I'd like to echo that. You know, David, I talked to a customer this morning and another customer uh, just yesterday and they were sharing with me that today they're using spreadsheets. It takes them about, a, uh, let's say, three days a week to manufacture a weekly plan. And each yep. day they spend many, many hours in order to, uh, to, to adjust the plan. And what they, are, they shared with me is that they have a plan for a ramp up in the next couple of months. And uh, they are saying, although we don't like how we work today, but it works. It will never work in a couple of months because we won't yeah. be able to scale with these spreadsheets that we manage today so manually and so tightly. Yeah, yeah, I, I see it a lot. Uh, planners uh, come up with with a very good Excel uh, uh, scheduling program, uh, but sometimes it can grow to monstrous uh, dimensions. 
And when you try to add a new department or new station, and I'm not talking about a new factory, it will collapse or it will be uh, impossible. Um, and the time they need to uh, invest in maintaining uh, those excels can take days, as you said. So the next one is a whiteboard or paper-based planning uh, or any hard copy uh, method. And again, it's very simple and intuitive to use, no cost involved, encourage team uh, brainstorming at the, uh, at the focal point. Uh, but the limitation, it stays there. It stays on the shop floor. It stays on the debriefing room. Uh, there is no digital backup or tracking. It's very difficult to manage complex schedule and multi-sites. Again, I'm not talking about scaling up. There's no uh, formulation. Everything needs to be uh, by hand. There is lack of real-time updates. Whatever is on the white paper, uh, it's there and that's it. And only the white, only the, the whiteboard or the paper or rest of it, unless you walk by uh, the whiteboard or you get hold of the, of the paper um, and it doesn't validate any rules or any formulas or any constraints, you will have to do it by hand. The last one is APS, Advanced Planning and Scheduling Software Tools. Um, and again, the advantages, it's specialized. Uh, it has, they have specialized feature for planning and scheduling. This is their purpose. Uh, they uh, give you real-time data integration and updates from across your ecosystem, whether it is from your MES uh, or uh, ELP or any other uh, uh, segment you already implemented. It enhances collaboration and communication between teams uh, uh, horizontally or, and ver vertically. So between departments and teams, and also between shop floor and top floor. And we will elaborate on this uh, in a moment. It increases planning efficiency, uh, again, from days to a couple of hours. And it supports scale uh, uh, at the heart of, of those solutions because it's very simple to scale. You just add more resources uh, into the uh, data centers and that's it. Some disadvantages to be fair, it's the cost of the software, of course, dependency on, dig on digital infrastructure, but you're probably already there. You already have your digital infrastructure uh, laid up and it requires uh, training, but I can say training can be something you achieve in a couple of days and mostly a week. <clears throat> At the end of the day, um, we know your job is complex, uh, but your team deserves the best uh, APS uh, solution. Um, and, and some tips that will help you uh, choose the right one for you. Again, whether it is Excel, Whiteboard, or an APS, you need to assess your need, the complexity of your operations, the team size and collaboration requirement, and uh, of course, uh, evaluate uh, the cost versus uh, uh, the benefit uh, of, of any solution. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I think that what we've learned here is that uh, mostly is that there's no like one t-shirt t-shirt size that fits them all. And when you're saying like choose the right or the best solution for your team, it's it's valid, like it's based on the on the needs, on the size, on whether you have a plans to scale or not. So many things that needs to be taken into consideration before you select just the right available tool for you. Exactly. Um, yeah. So exactly. so now that we cover the key elements in scheduling and the KPIs and business goals and the methods and the tools to have like a, a very good, uh, valid and optimized planning. Looks like yeah. a good time to talk about, uh, okay, so now that I have a plan, what's next? What's because next, exactly. For it my experience, there. yes, with uh, the super dynamic production environment, you have a plan on Friday afternoon, but when you come to execute it on, execute it on a Monday morning, you need to start over because many, events are coming up, many interruptions, and you need to, to address them. So I think it's yeah. a good time to talk about the plan sale yeah. life cycle. And, and as you said, if you already choose your method and choose your uh, solution, 
and now you have a plan it doesn't end there no planner mm -hmm. uh, job stops when you have a schedule or a plan so let's talk about the plans life cycle um, and why it is important uh, it ensures a continuous alignment with the business goals uh, that we covered um, and it facilitates proactive management uh, of your production schedule um, and let's uh, overview the stages of a good uh, plan uh, plans life cycle starting planning publishing executing monitoring adjusting and repeat okay so the first uh, the first step is planning no matter which tool you selected or which method you are using um, uh, the key activity of planning is to get the data the demand set whether it's from ELP or REMES, discover the current progress, okay? If you remember in the live demo, we were clearly uh, seeing what, what was going on last week. Remember the green ones and the blue ones and the gray ones? It was very clear to understand what happened last week. And it's a key element when you start uh, uh, planning. You don't only uh, need to account for the new work orders, you need to account for what's going on in the shop floor currently. And then, as we said, considering uh, all the dimensions of the problem, the equipment capacity and availability, the workforce, production uh, times, the horizon you want to schedule for, uh, and so on. And some best practices is use advanced planning tools, as we said, uh, cross-functional collaboration, you cannot do it uh, by yourself. Um, it's always good to have uh, risk management uh, uh, at any of those uh, stages. You try to you to take a, a decision based on data. Okay, it's very important. You don't want to start guessing or uh, uh, or, or, or trying to find out what's what's going on. Um, and take some uh, sustainability consideration if if you can, uh, if you can optimize the resource that is very uh, uh, that its carbon footprint is 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 very high, uh, uh, could increase uh, sustainability uh, uh, KPIs as well. So once you have a plan, you need to publish it, um, and before you publish, you need to finalize and approve the plan with the department leaders, with the operation manager. With the factory manager, each and every one of you know knows uh, the policies and the requirement requirements in their uh, business. Communicating the plan to all relevant stakeholders, so it needs to be hanged on the whiteboard. You need to hand over the papers, email the uh, Excel's, or share the schedule uh, via your APS. No matter what tool you you use, communication is uh, crucial. Ensuring accessibility and visibility across uh, the team, across the execution, and basically at any given time, because it's, it doesn't end when you publish it or when you hang the papers or when you write it on the whiteboard. You need to ensure they have accessibility and they are aware of it uh, the entire uh, plan's life cycle. And some best practices is clear documentation and communication channels and uh, stakeholder alignment and sign off. Uh, uh, at this uh, stage. Next, executing the plan. Again, we're starting to to um, uh, to 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 move. It start to move from your hands to the shop floor hands, but it doesn't end uh, there as well. So, uh, of course, you're not going to execute it. You are not as the planner. You're not going to to produce the parts or produce the good but uh, you need to make sure that they, uh, they implement your plan on the shop floor. They cannot ignore it. You need to make sure the assignment of tasks and resources, uh, resources as per the schedule, and you need to allow the coordination between the teams to initiate production and to have a good handover between departments. Some best practices, clear task delegation and responsibility assignment, effective resource management and utilization. You probably already have it in your MES systems or your uh, uh, or your other uh, collaboration uh, tools that are already implemented in your business. Um, and once it 
kick started, you need to monitor the plan. You need to track the progress in real time. You need to monitor key performance indicator, you, those KPIs that we've defined. It's not there uh, 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 just for, for the sake of uh, choosing the right KPI. You need to monitor those, you need to capture it, and you need to see that uh, your KPIs are as expected. You need to identify any deviations or issues uh, in the plan. And again, some best practices is using dashboards or real-time tracking tools, regularly uh, status uh, updates and reviews like your morning meetings and so on. And in the monitoring process, if you uh, discovered something that needs adjusting, this is the time to adjust, uh, responding to any change or disruptions, uh, adjust the schedule as needed, and of course, re-communicating uh, and delegating those changes to all stakeholders doesn't uh, end in your uh, spreadsheet or in your uh, uh, whiteboard. Everybody needs to be aligned. Some best practices is um, uh, you need to be agile and flexible to those approach uh, 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 to those changes. And if you remember, we said we talked about some uh, flexibility uh, uh, measurements like um, like buffers. If you have uh, buffers, you can uh, use those to to adjust. And regular feedback loop uh, for continuous improvements from your teammates, from your department leaders, and so on. Um, and repeat. So, you know, you you have your plan uh, ready at the beginning of the week, but then uh, reality comes knocking on your door, on your door, uh, and and you need to you need to adjust. You need to discover what happens, and and it's very uh, difficult to do it. I think so, that this is a great image of uh, like a Monday morning, or that many mm -hmm. can uh, relate to this image. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The, the <laughs> yes. plans are constantly changing, and planners uh, cannot uh, cannot ignore it. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I think that uh, everything that you explained about the plan life cycle uh, emphasized how important it is to have the co uh, full collaboration and smooth collaboration between shop flow and top flow. And I'm sure that you're going to talk and to explain about the challenges of this collaboration and also the tools that yes, can be yeah. used in order to overcome all the challenges. Yes, of course. So thank you, Anat. Um, let's cover, uh, let's start with the challenges. So um, we know collaboration uh, is important, uh, but the challenges, of course, is aligning strategic goals with operational execution. Um, and again, another challenge is the misalignment of priorities and goals. Sometimes one department leader uh, wants to do something or used to do something, but management uh, uh, have a, a different thing in mind. Um, the lack of communication due to different system usages. So, uh, and again, we talk about information silos or data silos. Um, uh, the, the, the shop floor is using the MES uh, system usually, the top floor are using uh, the ERP, and sometimes you, you lack the communication between those, uh, between those uh, systems. It's difficult to track and manage real-time data. Again, lack of transparency. Uh, by the time something, or when something happens in the shop floor, by the time it gets to the top floor, uh, the, the, the situation or the status is completely different. Um, and again, discrepancies between planned versus actual uh, in production. So let's see how we can overcome uh, those challenges. Um, again, we, we said it earlier, regular close course functional meetings, and I bet you already have those. You have your morning meetings, you have your shift meetings, you have your weekly meetings, and it's a good uh, point uh, uh, to get updates uh, or to update everyone. Uh, integrated system for real-time sharing. So if you already have your ELP set, your MES, your IPS, make sure they are integrated and uh, uh, doing uh, the collaboration or at least the channels, the, 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 the required channels are already uh, in place. Um, 
make sure we have clear and consistent communication channels, as I said, uh, if not through those systems automatically, so through Excel, so through Slack, Teams, Zoom, or any tool that you're already using. And cloud solutions uh, can help with that. They enable uh, team collaboration. Uh, you don't need to publish, to share, to notify. It's already there in one place and anyone in your organization can tap in and see the current status. We got into my favorite part, all about automation. Uh, I'd like to hear how we can automatically uh, get a valid, optimized plan because what, like my main key takeaways from what you discovered so far is that, that there are so many challenges, so many key elements that needs to be taken into consideration in order to have like a valid plan. So many KPIs and business goals and the methods and I cannot believe that there is uh, a person in, in the world as smart as, as he can be that can do all of these manually uh, in his head. Uh, so I think that now this part has become even more of my favorite. And, and probably not 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, you are correct. Uh, let's talk about automation and, and, and in particular automation in scheduling. So you saw me pressing the auto schedule, right? This is one type of automation, but it's quite manual because it requires me to auto schedule. I can tell you that we have customers that already uh, uh, skipping this uh, part and even the scheduling is done automatically uh, every week, every day, every time a new work orders come in. Or, or, or work orders get out of uh, uh, a delay. Uh, get delayed, yeah. So why automation? Yeah, reducing manual efforts uh, and error. Uh, if uh, it, if you're relying on the uh, on the human planner to 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 schedule, uh, you are always waiting for for it to happen, and you can uh, skip it and make uh, and make use of the automation uh, process. Uh, doing it for you. Um, it enhances efficiency and productivity. There is always an update and an and efficient and optimal plan out there. Okay. Uh, it can be con it can consider rules, constraints, and priorities, and your KPIs again automatically out of the box. Uh, some key benefits. Uh, it allows you to take faster decision uh, making. Uh, uh, optimize uh, the use of existing resources and real-time responsiveness. And let's see some key benefits of AI-powered uh, APS. So there is the old school APS, uh, which are very um, uh, focused on scheduling, and that's it. But when you introduce AI into the equation, uh, you get uh, far better optimizations in many aspects and many dimensions of your production. So, for example, you can maximize resource utilization. You can balance the workload and reduce the bottleneck. Uh, it can help you increase uh, predictability and lower the risks. And it gives you full visibility between departments, buildings, uh, sites, facilities and factories. It allows you greater flexibility. You can quickly adapt to changes uh, in demand, in capacity, or any other dimension that we cover today. Uh, you can uh, do the rescheduling in real time uh, to handle disruptions, or you can even switch on the automation to do the rescheduling for you when a work order is delayed, when a new work order uh, comes in, and all of that together allow you to scale uh, more easily, uh, uh, but it's suitable for small and large, uh, the same, so, uh, small and large production, the same. Um, yeah, and it integrates seamlessly with any existing systems that you already have in place today. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Uh, this was super interesting. Um, now we go into the Q&A phase. Uh, 
And actually, I'd like to start with a question that I had in mind. Um, sure. How can you balance competing business and operational goals during the scheduling process? Yeah, so it's a good question. And if you remember when we talked about it, um, it's always a problem, no, no matter the, what you're trying to balance between, it's always a good thing to prioritize, okay? Try to prioritize um, the KPIs or the goals that you want to balance uh, between. You need to anal analyze the trade-off, okay? Uh, between those competing goals. And this will allow you to take uh, better decisions uh, uh, when choosing the right KPI uh, for your business. And probably you, the planner, uh, knows the best. Uh, uh, and there is not, it isn't some, it's not something that I can tell you what to do. There isn't a, a finger or, 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 or a right uh, answer for that question. So you probably know the best and you need to prioritize, do the trade off analysis mm -hmm. and choose the best KPIs for your business. Okay. I see that there are two questions in the Q&A that I'm going to um, read to sure. you. And I invite everyone here in the, in the audience, just send us, send your questions over. We will be more than happy to address any question that you may have. So the first question is, how can AI scheduling solutions improve the quality of a plan? Okay, how can AI scheduling solutions improve the quality of a plan? Sure. So first of all, um, when you use AI scheduling, as I said, there's an envelope, okay? And in that envelope, there are many schedules or solutions that the AI can output. And as I said, old school uh, or legacy APS system will probably use the first schedule that they came up with. And this same goes for the human planner when you're using Excel. But the AI scheduling, um, uh, AI scheduling system, they run thousands of scenarios. They use, uh, they, they select the best, first of all, they select the best uh, uh, schedule for you. So you immediately gain on quality uh, of the plan. Uh, it gives you proactive alerts and it, and it also keeps updating you when something goes wrong. If you remember when I uh, removed the shifts, in the live demo, immediately those yes. tasks were alerted. We're so alerted there is with no the red direction angles. Exactly. There is no option that something will go wrong. Okay. There is no option that in two weeks from now, that part will get into that autoclave. Uh, everybody uh, are notified and aware of this. And it gives you a full uh, utilization uh, of your resources. Um, much better than you are able to do with other solutions. So overall, all of these uh, aspects can help you improve the quality of your plan. Um, yeah. Yeah, so actually you're, you're saying three very important things that the AI-based solution first uh, create you fully automatically an optimi valid and optimized plan. Yes. Then in case that you have and you do have interruptions on the production floor, it immediately mm -hmm. creates a new plan. It the you. third thing that yeah. you've mentioned is that it's like you are going on and you have like your personal assistant that uh, keeps you from doing mistakes. So you exactly. change, you put a tool for unplanned maintenance, immediately you get alerts on how it's going to, uh, what is the implications that you're going to face on, on your plan and, and so on. So very interesting. Um, exactly. A second question that I see here is how do automated planning tools improve the collaboration that happens between the shop floor and the top floor? Yeah, so um, again, we touched on it a couple of slides ago. Um, when all the data is in the cloud, everyone can tap in or you don't even need to tap in, you get the alerts in real time. And basically, you have real-time data sharing between all parties, between all stakeholders, between departments, uh, between stations, and the and the data is there. So uh, it's it's a it's a huge uh, step uh, in 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 collaboration that you don't have when you're using a whiteboard, when you're using Excel or spreadsheets or uh, or papers. Um, 
and it enhances uh, uh, your transparency, your visibility. Uh, it's basically there for everyone to use all the data that you need. So collaboration it, uh, is at the heart of uh, such systems. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even if you have uh, like the the perfect plan, but when you don't have uh, um, the the the, um, the full uh, correlation or the full uh, collaboration between the teams, it won't work. Yeah, the, the perfect another... plan is worth nothing if it's in your drawer or in your email or it's hang, yeah. hanging on the wall and you need to cross by it or review it in order to see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Another question that uh, Paul asked is, is there anywhere you recommend training for AI scheduling solutions, online classes perhaps? Also, would it be possible to get a copy of, of the slides? Um, yeah. Yeah, so so first of all here, this is what we are doing today and we probably will have uh, more sessions like this uh, in the future and you are welcome to contact me. I will share my uh, my contact information at the end of uh, uh, at the end of the webinar and you're more than welcome to to contact um, and I can share some more resources and we can uh, deep dive into more uh, subjects uh, that, that we covered today. Yeah. Um... I can tell, I can share a secret that I'm working for Platen. Professor Moshe Ben Bassat is an AI, an, an AI expert when it comes to scheduling solutions. So we have a lot of materials that we can share. Um, so um, Paul Davison, we will be more than happy to talk to you after this, uh, after this class. Um, I have another question, but um, other people here on the, um, on, on this uh, session, I welcome your questions. So just if you have additional questions, just bring them on. Mm -hmm. Maybe last question for my side, David, is uh, how do you manage bottlenecks in the production process? Yeah, so um, we touched on this uh, as well and we can uh, elaborate. Uh, but basically, first of all, you need to identify the bottleneck. So it means you regularly analyze your production process and see where are the bottlenecks. And sometimes the bottlenecks that you, the planner, thinks are the bottlenecks are not really the bottlenecks, and we see it happens a lot. So you need to yeah. communicate uh, with your, uh, with your, with the shop floor basically, um, and then you try to to optimize uh, that resource or that bottleneck. Um, uh, so they will be more uh, efficient so you can uh, do it by as we said bottleneck uh, 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 scheduling Planning. methods mm -hmm. sorry yeah yes yes sorry um, uh, and then yeah communicate the plan and you saw the the plans life cycle so if you if you identified the bottleneck correctly if you scheduled around it correctly and focus your scheduling that so that you start with eliminating the bottleneck and then scheduling everything around. You need to manage the, the plan's life cycle as you do today. Um, but keep in mind it, it could be tricky uh, because if you have more than one bottleneck, it will probably won't work. And you need some and, different approaches. Yeah, oh, this is very clear. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think that we can move on to the next, uh, to the summary of, sure. of this great uh, course today. Sure, thank so you. to summarize up everything that we talked about is that we understand that planning is just more and more and more complex than ever uh, because, because the need to ramp up and meet the increased demand and scale and this while addressing supply chain disruptions and also labor shortage and with new sustainability standards. Uh, so no doubt that planning becomes just more complex and complex every day. Mm -hmm. uh, next is that we also understood that a good and optimal plan must consider the demand set, materials on hand, uh, resource availability and capacity, business, business and operational rules and constraints, and all of yeah. these are like mandatory. All levels, all dimensions that you need to consider in your business. Correct. We also understood that competing goals require balancing and trade-offs and 
it's not that it's not necessarily that always you will select the same goals and the ranking will be just the same. It's all about balancing and trade offs according to the business goals and needs. And constantly uh, monitoring those, yeah. Yeah, we also understood that there is no one one correct plan method. It's more a holistic approach. A holistic approach is a must because in some cases you will need a, a, the first method. In some cases you will need the second method. And always it will be some kind of holistic approach that will consider all the methods that we cover today. We also understood how crucial it is to have a shop floor and top floor collaboration in order to have not only a successful plan on the paper or on the gun chart on the web, uh, you must have like fully full collaboration between the teams in order to to success, in order to grow, in order to scale and so on. Uh, automation is key because if I've learned something today from David is that there are so many dimensions and goals that needs to be taken into consideration in real time constantly. So this is not a job for a single person, not even for 20 persons. It's automation here is a key, no doubt about it. And that your team deserves an advanced API, API APS solutions. And we talked about the benefits. Um, I would like to thank you, David, for this super interesting uh, thank you, Anat. class thank today. You. I enjoyed it a lot. I also yes. learned some new things, so thank you so much for that. And you are more than welcome to contact us. Uh, David and, and me will be more than happy to stay in touch. Let us know if you have any questions. Let us know if you need any further training uh, classes. Uh, we're here for you and we'll be we will be more than happy to stay in touch. If you will scan this QR code, you will have uh, our email address and we're looking forward to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, David. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Uh, please follow up, we are here, anything you need. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Veronica.